This episode of the HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast is driven by Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy. CGA is the world's most comprehensive online gun dog training resource. They've got over 160 instructional videos that includes everything that you need to take a seven-week-old puppy to a finished gun dog. Visit cornerstonegundogacademy.com, sign up for their free preview module, and begin your training journey today. Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy, the most advanced gun dog training resource on the web. You are listening to the HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast, episode 167. This episode of the show, Dan and I are doing the obligatory New Year's episode. All right, welcome to episode 167 of the HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast, where you're on demand audio source for all things waterfowl and waterfowl hunting. This week brought to you by Dunn Sporting Goods. Dunn's is a family owned and operated business with two locations, one in Peabody, Missouri and Marion, Illinois. They've got over 60 years dedicated to providing the outdoorsmen with the best deals on hunting and fishing gear. Check them out and their selection at Dunn's, uh, shopduns.com as well as Facebook and Instagram at shopduns for weekly specials and giveaways. Joining me this week as he always does, Dan Hrushka. Dan, what's up? Not much, man. I think Dunn's, so Dunn's, they redid their uh, website and the discount code HPO, which gives you 10% off, not including... Uh, firearms or ammo you have to call to get that so it's not updated on the website but anyways yeah i haven't been saying that because i knew there was something going on with that for a while but yeah if you reach out to uh the folks over there and you know they'll they'll get you squared away they'll hook you up hey happy new year's bud yeah happy happy new year to you man i always say new years yeah i don't think it's a plural thing it's a new year singular new new decade (laughs) 10 years Indeed. What'd you What'd you do? Nothing. I stayed home and played Fortnite with my kid, and then um, yeah, we dropped to watch the ball drop and hit their sack. I think I fell asleep three times before the the ball dropped. Yeah, and then I watched it drop, and then I went back to bed. Yeah, I'm not a big New Year's guy. Uh, traditionally, I would be up early the next morning hunting. Uh, this year, my hunting my hunting life sucks because of the baby and everything that's going on, but. Uh, yeah, not not a big uh, New Year's guy, but what I am a big guy of is Gunner Kennels. They're engineered for your dog, designed for travel, and built for your peace of mind. The G1 Kennel has set a new industry standard and put Gunner in a category all its own. They're started to protect your pet, continues to be the center of everything they do, and they're dedicated to building the best and safest pet travel crate on the market because man's best friend deserves man's best kennel. Check out their G1 series of kennels and accessories at GunnerKennels.com. Also, I'm into Yukonuba, out in the field, how you've prepared determines how you perform. With balanced fat and protein to support peak condition, Yukonuba Premium Performance Dog Food enhances strength, energy, and endurance. So when the pavement ends and the truck doors swing open, you and your dogs are ready for anything. Strong, focused, ready for anything, that's a Yukonuba dog. And finally, Turtle Box. Turtle Box is the loudest portable speaker on the market. It's built for the outdoorsman. It's tough. You can drag it along with you on any adventure. It's built to handle mud, dirt, salt water, or anything else you can throw at it. Turtle Box is loud enough to be heard over your engine of your boat in the morning or your ATV, and the battery will last you for days. They're built with tie-down anchors where you can strap it into anything you can think of. You can also pair it with another Turtle Box to give you a true left-right stereo sound, just like you're at an outdoor concert. It's fully waterproof and tested to withstand salt and fog. Just hold it off when you're done. Check them out over at TurtleBoxAudio.com or follow them over on Instagram at TurtleBoxAudio. All right, Dan, this week we are doing the... The cliche, obligatory, you know, New Year episode or New mm-hmm. Year's episode in your in your New, your pronunciation. New Year's. So I guess we'll talk a little bit about the year that was, the year that will be, and uh, what else you got in your mind. I will have to say that I love that turtle box. Yeah, it's pretty I neat. Think, so the kids are just getting to the age now where they're grabbing my phone and like playing music and that's all they want to do is like pick their own songs when we ride around and stuff. Oh. When I hit that deer and I had to take the deck system out Which of my one? truck. Oh, with the uh, truck. With, with my truck. I had to take the deck system out because they had to redo the bed. They had that thing blasting in the garage the entire time I took it out. 
and then I put it in the other day and they had it blasting again. But I think that's going to be a, a great addition to the summer camping and the rest of the stuff we do outside. I do love that. Yeah, my big thing about that is I've had other Bluetooth speakers in the past that I've liked, but they weren't very rugged. Battery, you know, doesn't hold charge or whatever. I was always like worried about handling it because they're not, you know, a Bluetooth speakers and stuff. Quality ones are not cheap. But when I'm outside, I'm worried about it being exposed and things like that, where with this, I don't have that concern. So that's that's yep. a pretty, pretty nice feature in and of itself, just to not. <laughs> so I still have it in the back of my truck. And like when I come up to a stop, I can hear it like hit against the bed of my truck, <laughs> which I probably shouldn't do that. But the thing, like you said, you don't have to worry about it. I haven't worried about it at all. And it, it's still I charged it one time when I first got it and haven't charged yeah. it again. Same. So it does. It does well. Same as these. <clears throat> yeah span new year what um one thing i wanted to talk about and it, it was prompted by you going to the vet today so mm. tell me what's going on there yeah so i had my dog in the vet last maybe two weeks ago now a week and a half ago and just for his annual stuff and you know blood work everything looks good but it was weird because it, and it, so i've noticed his eyes looking a little um, foggy to me, kind of, which I don't think is abnormal for a dog older that's older. You know, yeah. they, that starts to happen over time. But I had noticed it and wasn't really that concerned about it. Well, we went to the vet, and my dog is still very, very hyper. So, like, it's tough for them to really evaluate and test him. So they went through everything, and they wanted to look in his eyes, but he was just not cooperating. And his eyes were all bloodshot. Like, he was so wound up. So they were like, well, we'll just whatever. And... Uh, they were going to give give him his immunizations. Right before we got to that, he kind of calmed down at the end, and I asked him to just take a look again, or you know, just to try to take a look in his eyes. And looked in the left one, and it was fine. Looked in the right one, and the vet got concerned because he had quite a bit of pigment that she could see in there. So she didn't want to give him the uh, vaccinations that day because she was concerned that it could be like something more serious going on in the eye. And that if you put in all these um, immunizations into the body, the system, it, the, his system might kind of go into overdrive fighting those and it might actually cause more harm to the situation in his eye. Whatever reason. Oh, so we held off on those and I took him to the specialist today and it turns out he's got, um, I don't know, I can't look at my phone right now because I've got you on FaceTime, but. Uh, whatever it was that I sent you that it was called, but it's essentially um, pigment gets into the eye and it's, uh, it's very pigmentary uveitis. Yeah. It, yeah. Something like that. So it's very common, in Pre- gold, very common in golden retrievers and is basically like a precursor to uh, glaucoma and things like that. So mm-hmm. essentially she said it's pretty advanced and um, it's most likely that he will have months to maybe a year and he will have like glaucoma in that eye so we're going to put him on some medication to try to slow that process and hopefully his body responds well to that treatment and basically just put like a eye drop anti-inflammatory in the eye to try to stop that progression but uh, if it doesn't and it is a very progressive kind of disease um, essentially when he when it does become where he's got glaucoma in that eye and it's actually in both his one eye is just more progressed than the other Mm -hmm. uh it can be and it is painful and uncomfortable for them Hmm. so there's a a few options there's not a lot but um you know one does include like straight up removing the eye so you know hopefully my dog doesn't have an eye patch um here in like the next year that he's got to wear around but um you know, the, the shame of it is like, it's so common in dogs and they think it's like a hereditary thing that, that specifically for golden retrievers, but, um, hopefully he responds well to this treatment and it won't cure it, but hopefully he will, it will prolong it to where, you know, his natural lifespan runs before having to like remove an eye or something like that. But yeah, it's not ideal. It's going to have to be something treated for the rest of his life. So it's not going to be cheap. And, uh, yeah, I'm not super pumped about any of that. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I was going to bring up was just pet insurance. And I've seen it, you know, being on um, CGA's Facebook page and, you know, SOK, their their Facebook page. And people are really, you know, this has just become a thing in the last few years. It seems like it's really catching on. Um, 
But I, is there like a such thing as pre-existing conditions with dogs? I don't, to get- I don't know. I, I, I can tell you, you know, a lot of people, waterfowl hunters specifically are interested in getting a dog for hunting. And I love, I love my dog. He's a member of our family. He does not hunt. He's a house dog, but I'll tell you this. I don't know if I'll ever own another dog again because he has been incredibly expensive, like ridiculous. The vet bills yeah. that we've spent on him have been freaking absurd it's like you know he's got um bad skin so he's always got like issues with his skin he's got food sensitivities so there's issues there he's got uh, because of his bad skin he gets ear infections all the time which we've battled a bunch uh, because he's got bad ears he he's shaken them to the point where he is he's had to have hematomas uh, removed in each ear surgically he had like the anal thing <laughs> like earlier this year that had to be removed um you know just it's just never ending with him and now that he's going to be medicated the whole like for the rest every month the rest of his life um you know i just i I caution people like the the romance of hunting with the dog is awesome right like that whole Mm -hmm. that whole piece of it and the thought of that and those memories and that and that stuff is is amazing i love i do love hunting with dogs but i can tell you if you've never owned a dog before and you're trying to, you know, the purchase cost and like the, the kennel and like the things you buy in preparation to bring the puppy home is just the tip of the iceberg. And some dogs are going to be better than others. But what I would say that I've learned through this experience is one factor in all of those costs and multiply it by more than you think that you're probably going to spend because like all it takes is one weird thing to come up and it gets so expensive. Um, Two, really, it's re- it's so important to do your research and get a dog with, with good bloodlines. I mean, my dog is a purebred golden retriever, and obviously they have issues with them. But, like, if you are buying a dog that is not bred with good genes and, and bloodlines, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for higher probabilities of experiencing these hereditary things that, my dog is going through it. Right. And you know, my dog's almost 10 years old now. So it's like, I've, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I thought, you know, we were, we were getting him, you know, and I'm not saying that my breeder wasn't reputable, but like, I'm not sure that they were properly breeding to try to, uh, you know, eliminate those factors. Yeah. Get away from some of these traits that like, I think they were just letting whoever breed and not really tracking that kind of stuff. So, I mean, yeah, but it's been almost since the beginning of him, you know, he's just always had something going on. So the amount of money that we've spent on him and the amount of hair that he has shed in our house is, uh, I mean, I can tell you my wife is definitely out on dogs from here on out. Like she is 100% out. And I kind of fought that for a while because I always, you know, wanted a lab and a duck dog and all that kind of stuff. But I'm kind of with her now. Like, I'm not sure I need that in my life anymore. It's just too, it's just so expensive. See, and I didn't, when I got Kimber, I was the same, like didn't do a ton of research. I knew her dad was a senior hunter. Um, and you know, a a good breeder, like you said, I did research on them, but then I looked at her bloodline and everything and, and, you know, it's just top of the line and haven't had any issues with her like that. I had one, there's like a, sty or something a little cyst on her eye that i had to get removed but it was yeah, nothing one, like one of those two <laughs> nothing like what you've been through mm-hmm. so anyway uh from a quick google search uh for people that do have dogs and are looking at pet insurance and cost and everything it says that the average cost for cancer treatment for a dog is seven thousand six hundred seventy one dollars that is not insured and most of the time, you can pay any, anywhere between ten to a hundred dollars a month. Most of them, most people can expect to pay between thirty and fifty per month for uh, for insurance for your dog. So something to look into. No, no doubt. I mean, I spent two hundred today just on the visit, <laughs> and I haven't, yeah. even, I haven't even went and got the medicine yet. And I paid six hundred last time because he has Ooh. a cyst on his uh, ear that we had to have you know, poked and see what kind of cells are in there and all his blood work up and stuff. I mean, vet bills are expensive and I mean, maybe they're higher where I live. I wouldn't doubt that, but I mean, you know, 
Vets make lot. vets make a good living. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So, man, one thing I wanted to talk about, you know, kind of looking back over this year and going forward into next year, and I'm having a very internal debate, but I think it's, it'll get settled pretty easily. Um, over the last few years, I've really, really got into, I guess, fell in love with duck hunting more than goose hunting. And it's kind of my jam now. I really would rather go duck hunting than goose hunting. Now that the kids are coming around, I feel like I need to spend more time in fields. I'm getting really nervous about them being around water. And I think just the thought of being in an A-frame, them being able to hide a little easier than some of my duck spots. Mm-hmm. Um can kind of hang out can run around if they have to i just feel like this coming year i'm probably going to start transitioning back into goose hunting more than duck hunting yeah i mean i kind of feel you on that i've always i've always enjoyed duck hunting more than goose hunting but because of where i live and where i hunt most of the time i primarily hunted geese because that's what we had right you kind of mm-hmm. hunt what you have but I love duck hunting, and I think I love duck hunting more than goose hunting because there's a variety of things, but mainly I like to eat ducks better than I like to eat geese. So um, that is the number one driving factor for me. I can kill a mallard and breast him out and throw it on the grill just like it is and be fine, where I feel like I got to you know go to work on geese a little bit <laughs> to, to get them edible at times. So I'm, I'm the same way. But, uh, you know, you got to shoot what you can, what you got. And I mean, the benefits of hunting in an A-frame are infinite. I mean, it is Mm -hmm. so much more comfortable like than layouts and for all the things you talked about is are perfect for kids and allowing them to stick their head up and look out and see the birds coming and then tuck in, you know, and move around. And it's just, I mean, for the, all the same reasons that it's good for kids, it's the same reasons I like it for me. Cause I'm more mm-hmm. comfortable. I can move more freely. I, you know, I can conceal easier. It's just, it's just good stuff. And, uh, I think that's why you're seeing the popularity of that style blind increase, particularly this year. Um, you know, you see multiple vendors coming to the market with competing products and things like that. So, um, I think that style is here to stay. And, you know, when I can remember when I first got into goose hunting, I spent hours reading uh, goose hunting chat forum about layout blinds hours about oh this one's packability and this one's size and profile and all these things and this one's got an internal frame this one's a sleeping bag essentially you know all that kind of stuff i spent so much time pouring over that and now i feel pretty confident i mean we we're running the lucky the lucky duck two by fours um i feel pretty confident that you can not only that but there there are several quality a-frame style blinds out in the market right now and you know you'd probably be happy with a lot of them I think I, I might make some adjustments to the two by four and it's just purely on the kids section, but, um, it's a little tall for them, especially once you get the, the brush up high. So I think I might cut a few little holes and sew them up to where they can actually stand inside and peek out when, when stuff's coming. Not, not big, like the tangle free, like the panel blinds. Cause well, I so think some question. of that. Movement, why don't, why don't you just use panel blinds instead of, instead of the two by four? I think in some situations I will probably. Yeah. If it's easier, if I have a back. Because I mean, if we're going rare, to them. rarely I have. I mean, again, it's probably going to change over time. But I don't think you've. I don't think I've seen you hunt with more than one at a time, one kid at a time, typically, no. or maybe two. Um, so I mean, you know, a couple sections of panel blind is pretty perfect. Um, yeah. Well, I bought that solo too, the Tango Free Solo Blind, mm. which can fit me and one kid and a dog. Has a dog door on it. Mm. But even that, like. That doesn't have anywhere where the kids can look out. So I think I'm going to be doing a little bit of Susie Homemaker and cutting and some hand sewing to try and and get some spots. Pretty rugged material. It might be worth your time to just have somebody with some textile knowledge just buzz a couple holes in there for you and (laughs) tie them up nice and tight so you're not dealing with fabric degradation over time degradation <laughs> that was a big word i nailed that that was 
<laughs> it's not very often I get to see your face, and you definitely enunciate it. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at your face. You're just out there in all its glory. I'm I'm hidden behind. I'm looking at what you can see, and I've got what is what oh, half the iPads behind covering me. I'm hiding behind the big mic with the pop filter on it. I'm like I'm like uh, Wilson on Home Alone or uh, Home Improvement. You can just see like yeah. my eyes basically. <laughs> Well, Tim. How do you know, neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. No, but there's uh, – looking forward to this coming year. You know, the guys that uh, we went down to Arkansas with last year are down there right now hunting with on the deck. So um, it sounds like they had a couple feeds around them and, and got skipped over a little bit today. But hopefully they have a good trip down there. So um, they'll be into camp and the rest of the guys, Pete and – all of them. Yeah, a lot so, of the crew that was on the snow hunt with us last year down there again. Yep. Which, that was a fun hunt. It was. We didn't kill a lot, but it was fun. Right. Yep. No, that was great, good great, great food. Yep. And, you know, Vandy Kemp makes me laugh because he posted a picture in the Facebook group of uh, the speed limit sign in the area there <laughs> that I got pulled over twice. <laughs> There, there were actually houses in that picture which yeah, that where you got not, pulled over. There. I was going to say, that, that, was, not that was not the area that I got pulled over because... I got pulled in an air quotes residential neighborhood that had no residents. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man. Anyway. 200, 200 some dollar fine. Uh, are there, is there anything on the, on the gear front that you're uh, excited about uh, for this coming year? Mm, I don't know, man might have to go over to the, the Sitka waiters. The Sims have been really good, but it's just getting, when you know there's something better out there, and the better part about it is oh, FOMO. The, the, zi- the zipper. FOMO. What is FOMO? Fear missing out. Fear missing out. FOMO. <laughs> Tell me you didn't know that. Come on. I'm. I didn't know that. FOMO, and uh, FOMO the zipper, and FOMO. I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff I want to get. <laughs> but what else do you want to get? Let's hear. Want to. I'd like to get the A400 mm-hmm. just because, and then some photography stuff, I think. Photography stuff. Yeah. Pretty neat. I, I like pictures. Yeah. I like multiple pictures in, in succession, also known as video. Yeah. I'm into that too. So some of that stuff. I tell you, um, I saw today... I think today oh, I saw it. I, I also would like a job in the new year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Employment would, would be solid. Em- employment would be great. Uh, FOMO. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you. Um, so Savage just, just released. Just came out with a uh, shot. Yeah. yeah. Their uh, light recoiling semi-auto. Renegade, I guess that's called. Mm-hmm. And it looks sweet. I mean, it's a hunting gun that looks a, a little bit of tactile look to it. Um, you know, I'm seeing it in the waterfowl patterns and some of their marketing looks pretty good. I uh, I gotta be honest with you though, kind of growing up for whatever reason. Oh, turkey version I'm seeing here too, pretty neat. Uh, growing up, and this could be com- just complete ignorance on my part. I had some sort of impression that. Savage guns were not quality and I just didn't, I don't know, didn't have a high opinion of them. Never shot one, never owned one. That was just sort of my like off the cuff thing. Right. But I still don't own one. Still haven't shot one, but I've heard a lot more people that do use them or own them, talk about them and have really positive things to say about them, particularly with some of the triggers on some of their rifles. Uh, So I feel like Savage has stepped their game up. Maybe that's, not accurate at all. Maybe their game has always been stepped up and I didn't know that, but they've got my attention more now than they ever have before. And the shotgun looks pretty cool. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I'm seeing an MSRP on it of, uh, what do I see here? It's like 15. Uh, this article is saying 1449, which maybe you could probably find it for a little less than that. But, um, you know, I don't know if it slots into the a 300 type competitor or not, but, um, Yeah. Looks like it's a pretty. Is it a three and a half inch gun or is it three? I can't. Can't uh, for fifteen hundred. It better be an A four hundred competitor, not the A three hundred. Well, the A four hundred competitor um, is the A four hundred is a three and a half, but that's like sixteen hundred bucks, seventeen hundred bucks. 
right? You're saying 1450, not too far <clears throat> off. Mm, well, in this article, it says that they shot three inch. I don't know if that means they. Oh, wow. I'm seeing video right now of <laughs> this is weird. So I'm reading this article in Outdoor Life, right, about this this um, gun. And I'm scrolling down through it, and what starts playing but an advertisement from our hunt last year on the eastern sh- on, on the shore with Beretta that we went out there with Rock House on the Torture Tour. <laughs> so there's what? a bunch of uh, all of us shooting birds and holding them and resting them, but we definitely didn't use the Savage. <laughs> yeah, there's me, like, cleaning birds. Pretty neat. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh, weird. That was cool. Anyway. Oh, man. I'm about to, having to wrap it up here. I think the uh going to have to get the kids from school. But happy new year. Yeah, I think this is going to be the shortest episode in the history of our episodes. That's all right. It was okay. a good one. All right. Well, I guess I should should punch it out then. I feel, wow, I'm, I'm feeling very forced right now. This is awkward for me. <laughs> One last thing or anything else? You just just daddy daycare starting up? Like I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, hey man, uh, you know the I got a new role with my unemployment and uh, just got to do what I got to do. Okay, well I guess we'll wrap this up and I'll go get back on the sticks and do some Fortnite and. <laughs> Jeez, it's pretty fun. Not gonna lie. And you know what? Excuse me. I would I would play against you. But I don't have that, and my internet would be too slow. So. Yeah, your internet sucks. It's cool. I'm I'm gonna play with Joe. He's he's got it under control. Anyway, double. Yeah. All right. Let me get this out so you can get the kid daycare going. But before I do that, let's take a minute to thank Dunn Sporting Goods, Gunner Kennels, Yukonuba, Turtle Box, and Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy, the world's most comprehensive online gun dog training resource. They've got over 160 instructional videos that includes everything you need. Take your seven-week-old puppy to a finished gun dog. Visit cornerstonegundogacademy.com to sign up for the free preview module and begin your training journey today. Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy, the most advanced gun dog training resource on the web. That does it for episode 167. And our look back at last year and brief look into this next year. If you're new to the show, head over to iTunes, check out all of our past episodes. You can leave us a five-star rating and review while you're there. It'll help us reach... Like-minded hunters just like you. That's going to do it till next year. Actually, I guess this is next year. So for until next time, for Dan, I'm Josh. Take care.